Welcome to part two of this Davon Data tutorial series, a Python crash course. In this video, I'm going to answer a very fundamental question. What exactly is Python anyway? The first answer that we can give in response to the question, what is Python, is that Python is an open source programming language which is maintained by a nonprofit foundation. And as you can see in this screenshot, if you take your browser over to python.org, you can go to the home website of Python. And what we can see here is a definition, a working definition of what is Python. Python is a programming language that lets you work quickly and integrate systems more effectively. Now what's interesting about this working definition is there's no mention of data or analytics or data science or anything like that. And that's because Python was originally built as a general purpose programming language. Back in the day, there was a software engineer who did not like the programming languages that he was using to build and maintain systems. So he invented his own language. And over time, Python became more and more popular, more and more people contributed to it, more and more people developed it and expanded it. And now it is one of the most popular programming languages in the world. And you, what you can see here is downloads. So you can download Python for completely free for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, and use it. And the experience that you get by default is something like this. It's an old school command line experience. Also, when you install base Python from this website, you also don't get a lot of the de facto standard libraries that you use in analytics and data science. That's why in previous videos, as I explained, we're using the Anaconda distribution of Python in this course. When you think about Python in terms of analytics and data science, you have to remember that it was built originally as a general purpose programming language. And let's talk a little bit about what that means next. So as I mentioned, Python was originally designed to be a general purpose programming language. And that's a bit abstract. So let's think about what that means in terms of the kinds of things that you might build using a general purpose programming language, whether it's Python or any other language. Websites. Great example. Using Python, you can build websites for small organizations or for very large organizations. That's a common thing that we do these days with general purpose programming languages. You can also use Python to create cloud services. And the easiest way to think about this is you have a laptop, let's say, at your house, and you're doing some stuff, but you need to access computing resources or data or functionality that's actually hosted somewhere across the internet. You can think of that as being a cloud service. That thing on the other side of the internet from your laptop could be written in Python. Python can be used to build enterprise applications. And the easiest way to think about this is in terms of a large corporation. Imagine an insurance company and they'll need internal computer systems to take in insurance claims and process claims, to underwrite new policies, all that sort of thing. Those are all examples of enterprise applications. Now where Python also plays a really big role is this idea of integrating systems. We saw that on the previous slide with the screenshot from python.org. And that way you can kind of think of Python as being like glue. It can do things like take your enterprise applications and then glue them, integrate them with cloud services, integrate them, glue them together with your websites, all that sort of thing. So sometimes Python code is simply written to allow these various things to interoperate. Now you may be asking yourself, hey Dave, that's great, but where does analytics and data science come into play? As a general purpose programming language, Python was not built from the ground up for analytics and data science. Later on, it was extended to support analytics and data science. And you might be wondering why. And the easiest explanation, quite frankly, is as data science moved into more mainstream, more and more software engineers, more and more technical people got involved with analytics and data science, and they wanted to use one of their favorite languages, Python, to do it. So libraries and capabilities were added to Python to support analytics and data science. Now, the good news is that because Python was originally built as a general purpose programming language and has lots of stuff in it, doesn't mean you have to learn it all. What you need to do is just focus on the bare minimum aspects of Python that are needed for analytics and data science. So what that means is that when push comes to shove, it's actually a relatively small subset of Python that you need to learn, at least in the early days. It's enough to get you started. And then if you want to learn more, of course you can. You can build on your foundation and then learn more advanced things like how do I build enterprise applications, cloud services, websites, deploy production models, all that sort of thing. So far, Python has been covered in this video at a relatively high level. So let's go ahead and dig in a little bit deeper into some of the technical details of Python. 
Another answer to the question, what is Python, is that Python is an object-oriented programming language. And that's just a very fancy computer science-y way of saying, how do you write the code in Python? How does the code actually work from your perspective as someone who types it out? And in this regard, everything in Python is an object. So your Python code works with objects. Now here's the good news. You do not have to learn object-oriented software engineering, and you also do not have to write your own object-oriented code to use Python for analytics and data science. And the easiest way to think about this whole OO software engineering thing is the kinds of things that we talked about on the previous slide. If you're building websites, if you're building cloud services, if you're building large-scale enterprise applications, you need OO software engineering and you need to write OO Python code to do those sorts of things. However, you don't need to do that for analytics and data science. So here's what you do need to do. You do have to learn how to use the object-oriented code written by others. For example, we'll see the pandas library, which is an extension to allow Python to work with entire tables of data. This is written by other people. It is OO code, object-oriented code, but you don't have to write the code yourself. You just have to learn to use the code that the pandas folks wrote for you. So basically what we're doing is we're standing on the shoulders of giants, and that means learning how to use Python for data science and analytics isn't really all that difficult. To cement this idea of object orientation, we're gonna use an example. We're gonna use a running example throughout this crash course, which is a simple table. So I have a table called my orders here, where each row is an order, and then each column is some aspect of the order. The order number, the product that was ordered, how many, and then the total amount of the order. Real simple. Even if you're not familiar with spreadsheets or databases, hopefully this is relatively intuitive to you. So as it turns out, this can be thought of as an object. So let's explore this idea a little bit more. In Python, objects are entities. They are programming things, if you will. And these things, these entities, have attributes and can perform operations. Now to make this less abstract, let's consider our table. So we can think of this entire table as being an object. And here's the great thing about using data tables as our frame of reference. They're ubiquitous in analytics and data science. For example, think about modern organization and think about Microsoft Excel. There are tables in Microsoft Excel workbooks all over <laughs> the place, right? Tables are everywhere, pivot tables, regular tables. Also, databases are nothing more than storage engines for the most part with tables of data in them. So they're everywhere. And not surprisingly, as I've already alluded to, working with data tables in Python is your bread and butter. So what we want to do is map this general idea of this very simple table here to these concepts in Python code. So let's, let's take a hypothetical example. Let's say that I have this table of data in Python and I want to calculate the average order amount. It's a contrived example to be sure. Take the average of these three values right here. So let's see how we can do that in Python code. Here is a preview of coming attractions. This is legit Python code in Jupyter Notebooks, which will be the subject of the next lesson. So Jupyter Notebooks is going to be the environment in which we write and run our Python code. And what we can see here is I've written some code. I said, hey, I've got an object. I've got a data table, which is called my orders. And if I run this code, sure enough, we see the data that we saw on the previous slide. We have now moved out of PowerPoint abstractions into Python code. <laughs> So we can see here the order numbers, the products, the quantity, the order amount. So this is an object right here. My orders is an object. It's a thing in my Python space, which means, given the concepts that we talked about on the previous slide, that it has attributes and it has methods. It has functions. So we can expand on this and we can say, look, hey, we want to calculate the average of this column right here, the order amount column. And as it turns out, the order amount column is an attribute of the my orders data table. So here's the Python code to make this quote unquote real. My orders is my object. And then using this square bracket, I can then access an attribute of the object. Now this particular way of writing the Python code is specific to data tables as we'll learn later on in the course. There are also other ways to access attributes of objects. So I don't wanna get hung up on the exact keystrokes that you have to do. Let's just think about the concepts here. I've got an object and I've got an attribute. This time I'm accessing the order amount attribute of the my orders object. What we can see here are sure enough, the values are spit out. $9.99, so on and so forth. 
Now lastly, what we want to do is then say, okay, great. We would like this object to perform a behavior. Specifically, we would like it to calculate the average value of the order amount column of the entire data table. So we can just expand upon this code thusly. I've got my object, I'm accessing an attribute, and then I'm using this dot notation to invoke a method or a function. This is a behavior. And by the way, just in case you were not familiar, mean is just another name for calculating the average. These two are synonymous. So I'm calculating the average. Hey, Python, grab the my orders object. Python says, yeah, okay, no problem, Dave. It's a data table. What would you like to do with it? I would like to access the order amount attribute. And Python says, yep, there is a order amount column on this data table. That's totally cool. Now, what would you like to do? I would like you to then access the mean function of this attribute, the order amount column. It has a function. It has a behavior that allows it to calculate the mean or the average. And Python says, great, no problem. And when I run this code, sure enough, I get the average value of 76.0, let's call it $76.1 per order. That's the average. And that at a very high level is object-oriented programming in a nutshell for analytics and data science using Python. It sounds pretty simple, I know. And of course, we're going to expand upon it throughout this crash course. But what I want to impart to you right now is don't be afraid of all this stuff. By the end of the crash course, this will be second nature to you, and you'll be ready to take additional courses in data science using Python. So the next video in this tutorial series is going to cover Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks is going to be the environment that we're going to use for write, for writing, executing, and evaluating our data analyses using Python. The great thing about Jupyter Notebooks is it's a simple way to get started, and it's they're also very easy to share with other people if you want to share the results of your analyses across your organization.